Are there things we can do to help in the control of this, or is it just keeping a watchful eye out on it? Well, keeping a watchful watchful eye is part of it. Keeping Um, good cultural practices is a huge part of it. Give me an example of that. What do you mean by protocol? and Keeping your trees healthy. So I mean, is, simply, is the Asian citrus psyllid more apt to hit a stressed out tree? Anything Abs- is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an immune system. So a tree has an immune system, just like we have an immune system. And if you keep your immune system in good shape, you're less apt to be attacked by disease. And no different for our plants. Same thing. Keep the trees and, healthy. And something just as simple as keeping your clippers clean. You know, if you have five citrus trees in your yard and one does happen to have it you prune that tree and go to the next tree you're you're going to spread the disease so you need to keep keep your clippers and equipment clean okay that makes sense but here's my other issue when i read it and i do a little bit of research about this the thing that disturbs me the most is yeah okay let's keep a watchful eye on it but it can be two or three years before it manifests itself Years. Yes. Yeah. The tr- the tree can be infected and not show any symptoms at all for two or three years. And that that's what worries me is people will be lulled into that false sense of security. Yeah, it could happen. But, you know, it's it's a numbers game. We'd like to see people plant more citrus out there so that we can have a, a broader community of citrus available out there, a colony of citrus, if you want to call it that. Um, monitor, get out in your orchard, walk your orchard, look at your trees, see how healthy they are. The citrus psyllid is a tiny insect, but it's pretty easy to see when you have an infestation because it, it looks like a little odd sort of moth-type casing that stands up at 45 degrees. That's one of the of the of the quick things that you can watch for. Look for the psyllid itself. Um, if you have the psyllid, it doesn't mean that your tree is going to be infected or that it is infected, but there are sprays that can be used. Uh, there's an organic program so that, you know, you can, can spray what your trees on a regular basis. What is that organic program consist of? Well, um, pyrethrum is one of the things. Any of your products that have pyrethrum based in them, um, oils, uh, the surround kale and clay type, sprays can be used lime sulfur which is something that you know we've all kind of become a fan of lately can be used Uh, even the garlic sprays and some of the copper salts those things can be used and then of course the uh, commercial nurseries have a whole battery of products that are available to them that are you know imidacloprid type based admire pro and things like that that they can use does that is that the biggest worry that the commercial nurseries are the ones that are going to send this out because they're not being monitored? Well, they are they're monitored. monitored. <laughs> and and people need to know. Yeah, that's just <laughs> emphatic. Your citrus nurse, all of our local suppliers, and this is it's, it gets down to local, local, local. They all have a, a certified budwood program where their budwood has to either come from certified budwood from the Citrus Center in Westlaco, Or they have to have their own budwood sent to the center and tested every Mm -hmm. year. And they test it to make sure it's clean before those trees are grafted. So having that certified budwood program is an important part of stopping this. I know a lot of people already, I already got an email, like, what specific uh, fruit is this on? Well, sad to say, it's on all citrus. So, So if we can stop the mass merchandisers from buying their products outside of the local region... We just solved the problem right there. Let's go back to the beginning. Everybody chime in as you want to. Uh, From a home backyard gardener's perspective, Uh uh, Angela, what can we do? Okay, backyard gardeners need to keep their trees healthy, and they need to get out in their backyard orchards and inspect their trees. If they see the psyllid, then they can actually have that, you know, a sample of that tested if they want to. Uh, get on a, a good spray program. There's an organic spray program if you want it. It's it's monitoring and keeping the tree's uh, immune system up and just being a part of it. And again, I want to say I encourage people to plant citrus. There's nothing wrong with these citrus trees. Our local growers are all inspected, certified, licensed nurseries. We know that our local suppliers are safe. Um, and as, as a home gardener, Citrus is so wonderful. We shouldn't let anything about this um, put us off of growing citrus, discourage us from growing it. Beverly, you are a a magnificent seller of citrus trees in the local area. So you have tagged these. Everybody can rest assured. We buy local growers 
reputable growers, and that's what I would recommend to people is be careful where you buy and look the tags on the trees. So if it came yeah. from Tree Search Farms, yeah. Heidi, you're doing everything you can, right? Exactly. Oh, absolutely. We have from the beginning. Actually, we have two citrus orchards at the farm, so uh, and they look better than they've ever looked. Um, something, uh, I don't know if it was brought up or not, but let's just say, as Beverly said earlier, why, why just Harris County? Well, if they find greening in, let's say, Galveston County, then two joining counties, you can ship citrus within those counties Mm -hmm. if they're connected. And growers, what's interesting too, growers from outside the county, let's say Waller, and a grower over there wants to send citrus, they can now, the, the growers who signed this compliance agreement, they can now ship into Harris County some of the growers, but nothing can go out of Harris County once it's in, but they cannot deliver a truckload of citrus and stop at different places and then go through and deliver outside on the other side, let's say um, Orange County. Yeah, Orange. You got you agree with that, Monty? Uh, everything she said was correct. I don't want to waste time describing it because it's posted on the Internet at arborgate.com. Bottom line is, yes, it's eventually fatal. Right. But don't panic. Something in mind, and Monty, you could, the, a plant could have greening and not show symptoms for a while. That's correct. Yeah, we oh, talked about that about 20 minutes ago, that it, it takes a while one, to manifest itself. One thing I think is to get to become familiar with what the psyllid looks like. And if I remember, it's the egg, the way the egg is attached to the, the leaf or something. They're tiny. People, yeah, Angela, I think, did a good job of explaining that Yeah, we that did. Earlier. It's, it's, you can see the little insect, and like I say, it sort right. of stands up at a 45-degree. That's the telltale, is that it's standing up exactly. at that little 45-degree angle. So, And, and those so pictures will be on the, the Internet in yes. many ways, shapes, yeah. or forms. Arbor Gate, Garden Academy, we're going to join all those up on Facebook fan page. I, I believe this coming week's KTRH email tip will be all about citrus greening if I do my due diligence and get everything lined up for that as well. Um, let me ask you this, Monty, from a Texas A&M perspective, because a lot of people understand, may understand that A&M has a big citrus, is tied into a big citrus program, research program down in the valley. Uh, do they feel, I guess, positive, uh, optimistic that there is some control in the future on something like this? Well, Randy, there's a lot of research going on in Florida, uh, California. Every, all of the major citrus uh, producing states are engaged in, in research. There's a, uh, I would say there's there's belief that we will we'll find something. There's growers in Florida who have been successful at uh, extending the life of trees, the productive life of citrus trees, through uh, management of psyllids and use of uh, fertilizers. Greening, interestingly, is a is a fertility problem. It impairs the tree's ability to mobilize nutrients. So we've learned at least that we can extend the life of citrus trees with the right fertilizer management. So, um, yeah, there's there's optimism that uh, we've got great minds at work on this and uh, we're going to eventually find something. Um, it's really put Florida in a bind because they have continued to lose a lot of acreage in the meantime while we don't have a complete cure. And what's challenging is that psyllid management is ongoing, um, and, and it is a it is an insect that that repopulates itself uh, multiple times each growing season. So you don't see it once, control it, and then you're done. It will keep coming back to you or to your trees over and over again. And so there's a fatigue issue with management or control of this. Now, one advantage we have in the Gulf Coast area is it gets cold in the winter. That tends to reset the psyllid population or set it back and give us a little more control over like Florida. Over Florida and South Texas where that psyllid really has a robust population